Against the motion, Mr. Hitchin. Unanswered questions. Amazing. No one, though they were asked repeatedly, would say whether they thought Stephen Fry, my friend, was in a state of mortal sin or not. They wouldn't tell you. Something about the question brought out their inner coward. Well, I say that homosexuality is not just a form of sex, it's a form of love, and it deserves our respect for that reason. That if, if when, I, when my children were young, I'd have been proud to have Stephen as their babysitter, and I'd tell them they were lucky. And if anyone came to my door as a babysitter wearing holy orders, I'd call first a cab and then the police. <laughs> Well, I asked her about because she, she wasn't content just to say religious people volunteer for charity, as if that was news to anybody. But she had to couple it with a smear against Fabianism and social democracy. Now, as a matter of fact... Well, they weren't the, there, Christopher. That's I'm all so I was sorry saying. to say I that without the, no, the, effort, the, fa the efforts of Fabianism... But you're good at you, smears. The efforts of Fabianism... What's wrong with a smear? I, I don't... I'll get to the end of this sentence if it kills you. <laughs> <It'll end up. laughs> I, for one, will take it as extremely insulting if any person of faith makes the assumption that their faith gives them a moral edge on me. I want to hear a lot more apologizing from the faith-based communities for the evil that they've done before they even start clearing their throats and telling me I wouldn't know right from wrong without their permission. I'm sorry, I won't be, can't be spoken to in that tone of voice and nor should any of you. You call that one thought? And you're... You have contempt for thought if you think that. I, I'm sorry, I have to uh, not stop trying to be funny here. No, hang on a second. If you have contempt for thought, it's simply because you recognize that someone who bases everything on reason has faith in the reasoning process, what's wrong with saying that? Because Why can't I, you say, I have confidence in reason, I have faith in reason, I trust in the reasoning process? You won't say that because it will reveal that both our positions are faith positions. If you ask me why I believe in the Bible and I flip open the Bible and show you a verse, you say you're appealing to what you need to prove. If I ask you why do you believe in reason and give well, me a reason, I'll tell you then what, you, open, uh, your, you face, open your book, no, you I, open the reason and yeah, give me a reason. No, no, you're, you're again, you're making a huge leap. I say, I say that the Bible, like the Quran and like the Torah, is man-made, not God-made. It's a, it's a, it's a human-made literary accretion, full of plagiarism, contradiction, fragmentation, and so on. It's like every other book ever written. And I wrote... There's nothing divine about it, and the appeal to, to it saying, I can trump anything you say because here's God's word on the page, is a contemptible way of arguing. I, I wrote a logic textbook. Does that make logic man-made? Uh, logic is man-made, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So logic is, so there's no reason to follow it, then? No. If, there's, if I reject the Bible because it's man-made. Philosophy, philosophy, logic, logic is the attempt by humans to make sense. It isn't, it, isn't, it isn't a divine endowment that we possess. Same with philosophy. Philosophy means the love of wisdom. We don't say it's the revelation by... You say what you have is revealed. Now, here's the way of clarifying the difference between us somebody asked earlier. I don't claim to know more than I can. Everything I've said this evening, I've backed by assertions evidence argument. Douglas Wilson, who's just as modest and friendly and tender a chap as I am, says, yeah, but I have an advantage over Christopher, which is I know what God wants, and I know what he says in his book. I have access to a higher authority. Now, what I want you, I'll ask him, but I, I don't care. I've asked him before. You have to ask him. How does he know that? And by what right does he claim to know the mind of of God. And if you were a serious spiritual person, wouldn't you think it was a bit much that someone said? They could come before you and tell you what God wanted? As long as they don't call it modesty, I don't mind. As long as they don't call it humility, I don't mind. But I don't like being told that my arguments aren't as good as his because he has uh, divine information that's withheld from me. So what if God actually exists, sir? Would he not have been good to you? No. Uh, he wouldn't. Because if, if that were true, it would mean that I had an eternal supervising parent who would never die and let me get on with my life, never let me grow up, who keep me under surveillance. But you have, sir. And supervision every, every minute of my but, life. But you constantly have. Asked, and constantly ask me to be thanking and praising him. Yeah. I well, think it would that be wasn't part like, of the scenario. Like living in North Korea. I, I, I think it would be a horrible outcome. 
Well, not sure that, that, that God is Kim Jong-il, but what if what I said is well, true? Well, uh, Kim Jong-il, he has a different opinion. Um, one of the reasons why I like doing this, some people say sometimes, don't I ever get tired of debating with the religious? No, absolutely I don't, because you never know what they're going to say next. <laughs> Sam and I don't mind being called predictable. It's very easy. We, we, we know what we think. We say straight out where we think we know and where we think it's not possible to know, why we don't think there's a supernatural, and so on. But this evening already we've had your suggestion that God is only really a guru, a friend when you're in need. I mean, he wouldn't do anything like bugger around with Job to prove a point. And... Which, if I now tell you, well, that must mean that that book is not the Word of God. You'd say, well, whoever believed that ever, that ever was the Word of God. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. For hundreds and thousands of years, this kind of discussion would have been in most places impossible to have. Or Sam and I would have been having it at the risk of our lives. Religion now comes to us in this smiley face, ingratiating way. <laughs> because it's had to give so much ground. And because we know so much more. But you've no right to forget the way it behaved when it was strong. And when it really did believe that it had God on its side. The people you, who you've been the megaphone for all evening and been encouraging, I might add. Uh, the silly girl who says, why should it only be men who decide? The people who... Uh, Bra <clears throat> Randall Terry, well, Catholic. So silly, Randall Terry, really, wait, wait, are you asking me or telling me? I'm, I'm asking you a question. Well, why don't you listen to what I've got to say, you're, you're, you're saying that they're ridiculous listen, people. I've had to be sitting in, your, in, in this, this chair situation. for half an hour listening to you being a megaphone for frauds, and I'm giving you my response. And, and they sought support from overseas, and then the whole situation and they started went out of control. Right. All right. All right. So wait, so wait, wait, no. The the they, 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 oh, they're they're saying saying had Christopher, we, Christopher's we, turn to we, let, we, let we, Christopher respond. No, I'm just, I'm just want to finish the okay. point. What I'm saying is that had it been addressed at the local level, it would have never become an international phenomena that it became. It should be addressed at the local level like Signe did. When, when, when the Philadelphia Inquirer decided to put out, publish that same cartoon, they called the Muslim community and said, we want to do something about this and we want to create dialogue. Now that was responsible, that was socially responsible. Christopher, go ahead. When, uh, Christopher Dr. Hitchens. when Dr. Samuel Johnson had finished his great um, lexicography, the first real English dictionary, he was visited by various delegations of people to congratulate him, including a delegation of London's respectable womanhood who came to his parlor in Fleet Street and said, Doctor, we congratulate you on your decision to exclude all indecent words from your dictionary. And he said, ladies, I congratulate you on your persistence in looking them up. <laughs> um, I, think, <clears throat> I think anyone who understands that story, which I'm pleased to see everybody obviously does, will see through the sinister piffle we were just uh, treated to just now. If people are determined to be offended, if they will climb up on the ladder, balancing it precariously on their own toilet system, to be upset by what they see through the neighbor's bathroom window, there's nothing you can do about that. The imams, the, imams, the imams in Denmark did the following. First, they invited the intervention of 22 foreign ambassadors in Denmark's internal affairs. Itself a disgrace. The Danish prime minister quite rightly repudiated it. Then they added two cartoons of their own, drawn by them, one of them showing the Prophet Muhammad in the shape of a pig. Then they shot those around the Muslim world until they could get kindling going under the embassies of a small democracy in the capital cities of countries where demonstrations are normally not allowed. And they violated Danish diplomatic immunity. They tried to sabotage the Danish economy. There were random pogroms and attacks on individual Scandinavians. And David Cesarini says he doesn't like the reminiscence of the 1930s that is in, in, inscribed in the cartoon. I don't like the reminiscence of the 1930s that is involved in a Kristallnacht against Denmark, put, put up by religious demagogues and thugs. And that's what needs to be condemned. It's very impressive to me. Oh, okay, because good. It's, often, it's very often the first thing. When we debate with Catholics, they always change the subject to charity right away. With Jews, it's usually a little later. You just okay. said that they... And with Muslims... And with, just, Muslims, yeah. and with Muslims, it's, it's at the all end. the time. Because what, what else can they... They don't want to defend their faith. But you just said Wait the opposite. Second. They you just, just said that they don't want to defend, didn't believe you wouldn't do it. They don't want to defend their faith. They don't want to say... They, don't, they feel uneasy talking about redemption, salvation, all this kind of thing. But, but look at the good work we've done. If you talk to the Mormons, they'll say, you, should, you may not think much of Joseph Smith, 
And I say, you got that right. Said, <laughs> but, boy, you, you should see our missionaries in Peru. So government will do the work if What's religion this, does excuse not. Excuse me, government? What, what has this got to do with the existence of God or the validity of religious claims. It has nothing to do with it. Social which utility. is why it's always introduced oh, yeah, as a time-wasting tactic. Wait, 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 wait. No, don't applaud that. Nothing to do with it. He just... <laughs> <laughs>
I got a good one. Raising the sights a little, just a fraction. Um, I'd say that the, to me that what matters most is the pursuit of happiness in the words of our greatest founding father uh, and the pursuit of liberty, freedom. And that these things are incompatible, completely incompatible with the worship of an unalterable celestial dictator. Someone who can watch you while you sleep and convict you of thought crime and whose rule cannot be challenged and who's the big brother whose who's eternal reign uh, may not be disputed. That makes the concept of the pursuit of freedom and happiness completely negative, negates it. Uh, so I, I, one of the things I live for is to return a stout and joyful non serviam to this dictator who I'm pleased to find doesn't really exist but is instead a creation of those who want to install a theocracy in the real life where I can participate and I'm not going to give them an inch. The second uh, thing I live for is, um, if not exactly passing on my genes, taking part in activities that might allow those genes to be passed on. <laughs> and not, <clears throat> and uh, not scorning the, the three delightful children who result, who are everything to me and who are my only chance of a, even a glimpse of a, a second life, let alone an immortal one, and I'll tell you something, if I was told to sacrifice them to prove my devotion to God, if I was told to do what all monotheists are told to do, and admire the man who said, yes, I'll gut my kid to show my love of God, I'd say, no, fuck you. <laughs> now, I hope I've made myself clear on the, but I'm wondering if I have, because you face me, Reverend, with two very unwelcome thoughts. Either I have been completely inarticulate in everything I've said this evening, or you have misunderstood me. I have, to throw my, I have to throw myself, or these are not mutually exclusive. And I should have seen that coming. Not imposed? Did you really say not imposed? What if you reject this offer? What are you told by, what have you been told for centuries by Christians? If you reject this offer that took place by means of a torture to death of a human being that you didn't want and should have prevented if you could, what if you reject the office? If you, if, you, if you accept it, you can have eternal life and your sins are forgiven. Oh, great. What a horrible way to abolish your own responsibility and get your own bliss. I don't want it. Oh, you don't? Well, then you can go to hell. This is not imposed. This hasn't been preached to children by, by gruesome elderly virgins with backed by force for centuries. <laughs> hasn't po hasn't, this hasn't poisoned whole societies. For you to say of Nazism that it was the implementation of the work of Charles Darwin is a filthy slander, undeserving of you, and an insult to this audience. If it's an atheistic regime, then how come that in the first chapter of Mein Kampf, Hitler says he's doing God's work and executing God's will in destroying the Jewish people? How come the Fuhrer oath that every officer of the party and the army had to take, making Hitler into a minor god, begins, I swear in the name of Almighty God, my loyalty to the Fuhrer. How come that on the belt buckle of every Nazi soldier it says, Gott mit uns, God on our side? How come that the first treaty made by the National Socialist Dictatorship, the very first, is with the Vatican? In his comment, one of the few he's made on the institutionalization of rape and torture and maltreatment of children in Catholic institutions, he has said, it's a very severe crisis which, which involves us, he said, in the following in the need for applying to these victims the most loving pastoral care. Well, I'm sorry. They've already had that. In Christianity, you have the idea, for example, that morality is intentional. If you've contemplated the sin, Christ says, in a sense, you've committed it. Thought the, crime. The, one second. The, the mullah thought doesn't... Thought crime. Totalitarianism again. Thought crime. Uh, whether we, know it is or not... we know what you're thinking, and we can punish you for it. Totalitarianism defined. Tyranny defined, thought crime. Well, secularism is the only guarantee of religious freedom, and yours and that of every other Muslim, we will defend. But you won't be surprised that we have some questions for you in the meanwhile. Thank you. Your, your view would be the same as mine, that child sacrifice is reprehensible, would it not? Did Abraham think child sacrifice was an okay idea? He obeyed God and God intervened. The, the, the ultimate question is, does God think child sacrifice since he sent his own son to be the ultimate sacrifice? Well, I he mean, appears to be in favor of it. He does appear to be in favor of it, but in I context. I agree that we were not. Uh, I'm, 
The Bishop of Llandaff, in an argument with Thomas Paine, once said, well, when it says keep the women, as Paine had pointed out, he said, I'm sure God didn't mean just to keep them for immoral purposes. Well, what does the Bishop of Llandaff know about that? He says, kill all the men, kill all the children, and keep the virgins. I think I know what they had in mind. I don't think it's moral teaching. <laughs> no, it is. By the way, the Russian, the Russian Orthodox Church always stayed with Stalin, always stayed with Stalin. But they never killed 30% of their population. Who didn't? The Russians never killed 30% of the population before the communists took over, 20 or 30%. No czar ever did that. No, no Christian czar ever did any killing on it. Well, no, excuse me, they started the First World War. They started the pogroms. They brought the protocols of the elders of Zion to, that was imported by czarist secret policemen to National Socialist uh, Christian gangsters in Europe, how much do you think the export of Russian Orthodox anti-Semitism cost us in point of lives and war? And have you ever counted up what happened to uh, the wars, uh, in the wars that Tsarism started and carried on, and the persecutions, and the famines, and the tortures, and the starvation, and the people who just died of neglect? Come on. You want to do this accounting, I'm here. I'm really here for you. Or what, the Serbian, or what the Serbian Orthodox and the Russian Orthodox have just done in the Balkans? The, yes. the most recent genocide we've seen in Europe, entirely done by, by a Russian and a Serbian Orthodox fascist and Catholic uh, Croatian Ustasha, grinding a whole part of civilized Europe into nothingness and bloodshed for their filthy, stupid medieval quarrels. How dare you say? that any secularist, we who've opposed this kind of barbaric stuff, are on all fours with these creeps. Don't, you should take it back. You owe me an apology. <laughs>